Hello and welcome to Projector, and on this episode, Will Smith is the genie in Guy Ritchie's live-action remake of Disney's Aladdin. In the kingdom of Agrabah, Aladdin, played by Mena Masood, is a street urchin who has to steal to live, but his heart is stolen when he encounters Princess Jasmine, played by Naomi Scott, while she has escaped from the palace in disguise. Aladdin is captured by Jafar, played by Marwan Kanzari, the Sultan's chief advisor, who needs a diamond in the rough to capture a magic lamp from the Cave of Wonders so he can use use it to rule over the kingdom. When Aladdin gets the lamp, he awakens the genie inside, played by Will Smith, who can grant him three wishes, but is that enough to earn Jasmine's love? In 1992, Disney's animated Aladdin, adapted from the Thousand and One Tales, made over half a billion dollars at the box office, making it not only the highest grossing animated film at that time, a record that would later be surpassed by The Lion King a few years later, but simply put, the highest grossing film of that year period. It also managed to pick up two Oscar wins for Best Score and Best Original Song for A Whole New World, as well as spawning an animated TV series and two inferior direct-to-video sequels. So it's understandable then that Disney is going back to the Cave of Wonders once more, especially since the company is currently trying to mine its IP for all it's worth, literally with a string of remakes or belated sequels. And this is the second of three live-action redos of previous Disney animated classics this year. Of course, the first one was Tim Burton's surprisingly depressing version of Dumbo, which was bad, to be honest. And later this year, we've got Jon Favreau's The Lion King, which looks the same, but in CGI. Now, I have to admit that I hadn't actually seen the 1992 animated version of Aladdin in over 15 years. The last time I saw it was a kid on VHS. So I actually re-watched it for the purpose of this review, so I could compare and contrast. And as you'll probably be unsurprised to hear, it totally holds up. It's a gorgeously animated movie that's full of energy and a great vehicle for Robin Williams' talents. He's the thing that everyone remembers about that movie and with good reason. And now that Williams has sadly passed, his betrayal of the genie has actually gained a rather more poignant, bittersweet dimension now. And so this movie has very big shoes to fill in a lot of ways. And I do think that remaking Aladdin isn't necessarily a bad thing. There's a Broadway remake of the movie that is a great stage show. It proves that it can be done. So, on principle, a live-action remake of Aladdin isn't terrible. It just depends on the execution of it. Luckily, I myself have a magic lamp, so maybe I can wish for this movie to be great. Oh, genie, oh, genie, I wish for the Aladdin remake to be good! Oh wait, this is a teapot. That would explain why it didn't work then. Look, I'm not stupid. I'm aware that films are a combination of art and commerce. That's always going to be the way. But typically, the films have to be entertaining enough that you don't think about the business side of it whilst you're watching it. But that's very hard to do with this new version of Aladdin. You always think about the corporate machinations that brought it into existence. People talk about magic when they speak of Disney's animated films, but more Aladdin brings to mind another M-word, that of machine. Machinery. This is a good example of Disney as a massive corporate entity and the cynicism of it of just repackaging and repurposing an existing IP and just putting it back out into cinemas in a slightly different form for people that loved it the first time around and making easy profit off it, while simultaneously being able to merchandise not only the new version of the movie but also the old one for people that didn't like the remake. It's ingenious really when you think about it. And so so you know that that's the reason that this exists and not because there's any new creative spin on the material. And that's the problem with a lot of these Disney remakes. Now, I don't want to throw all of them under the bus. There are good examples of Disney remakes. Jon Favreau's The Jungle Book is a very different beast to the animated version, and it helps because they can go back to the source material to a certain extent and capture that darker tone somewhat. Similarly, Peach Dragon is a totally different movie compared to the original. The difference is, though, is that with those movies, they're either old enough that they can make those changes and have a little bit of flexibility with it, similar to, say, Dumbo, which is also a very loose remake of the animated film, or in the case of Peach Dragon, 
No one cared about it in the first place, so you can do whatever you want. You can go back to the drawing board. That's the great thing about remakes, is that you can tell a story from a totally new dimension. Where the problems with these remakes start to appear is when you start redoing more recent material, especially that from the Disney Renaissance. So I'm thinking of things like Aladdin, The Lion King, and Beauty and the Beast. There's a whole generation of kids that grew up with those movies and hold them really near and dear to their hearts. There's a lot of kids that know those movies line for line and beat for beat. They are culturally significant and beloved, and in those cases there is no wiggle room. You can't go back to the drawing board and do radical changes because you'll isolate your audience. They'll revolt and then you've cut off your box office takings. I mean, you could be brave about it, but very few are. So essentially, what these films have to do is they have to set out to make the same film again, but only do it in a live action space. And you could argue that that's a reason alone for them to exist because by necessity, live action films and animation are always going to be different. But the thing is, if you set out to just make the animated movie again, then you're already fighting a losing battle because it will always lose something in translation. This is particularly clouded in the Disney remakes because they use so much CGI work. This is particularly true in Aladdin of the animals, Iago or Abu or Jasmine's tiger, all of which are represented by CGI and all Always stick out like a sore thumb, especially because they still try to anthropomorphize them in the process, like their animated counterparts, which again defeats the purpose. They've essentially made realistic, dialed back versions of the animated characters that lose a lot because of it. Like, Iago is simply reduced to being a parrot, which is ironic considering that the whole point of Iago in the original film was that he was angry at having to pretend to be one, and now, voiced by Alan Tudyk, he's not doing the whole Gilbert Godfrey thing, he's just a parrot, which makes him considerably less interesting. It just makes him, oh, a bird. And because these films use so much CGI in pursuit of this to the point where they could be called animated films themselves, and the fact that they have such a clean, glossy sheen to them, they're essentially just hollow plastic recreations of the animated films. And to compare the 1992 film to its 2019 counterpart really is nice and day. It really is quite brutal. You compare those scenes where Aladdin is racing around the streets of Agrabah and the guards are chasing after him. In the animated film, it feels fleet-footed. There's lots of gags, there's lots of energy on screen. In the Guy Ritchie version, it's desperately trying to match that with a lot of quick cuts, but nothing is particularly impressive about what's going on screen. It feels restricted by the laws of reality. It invites the comparison so often, it never stands out as being its own thing because you're always constantly being reminded that the original film exists, because they're always quoting from it. They're always trying to put a visual nod to the original film, or they're quoting the original film's script verbatim in places, and so you're always reminded of how inferior it is on a constant basis. And Guy Ritchie adds very little to this film. I have a term for what Disney does for certain directors who normally have quite a distinct style to them. I call it a director's corset. They feel like they're restricted by the corporate machinations of the company. That's definitely the case with Guy Ritchie. Even in Ritchie's worst movies, like that wretched King Arthur Legend of the Sword, it looks like a Guy Ritchie film. It has that very distinct look, that editing style that he's very much known for. Here, it's completely anonymous. Aside from a couple of instances of speed ramping, you'd hardly tell it was one of his movies. Now, in some people's book, that might be a good thing, but the whole point of hiring someone like Guy Ritchie is for them to give an imprint on the work they're making. And if they're not doing that, then why are they even here in the first place? There are changes. It's not a total copy, but they're mostly of the purely cosmetic variety. So certain plot elements have been smushed together, others have been totally dropped, but they don't really affect the overall plot engine, which is faithfully replicated in this live action version 
version beat for beat. What they did change mostly just weakens the movie incrementally and mostly just seems to be there so that they can say, yeah, we did do some things differently and also to pad and bloat out the movie to two hours. Some of the more major additions though really feel ill-advised. I'm especially thinking of Jasmine's Handmaiden. Can we just talk about that character for a moment? At some point in the writing process of this film, someone decide, you know what Aladdin was really missing? The best friend character from a romantic comedy. So suddenly she's just patched into the film and she's totally out of place. And her purpose in the film is to serve as a love interest for the genie. Yes, you heard that correctly, the genie gets a love interest this time out. I guess to humanise him a bit more? Why is it even there? It's so unnecessary. The climax of the film is also noticeably weaker. Instead of Jafar turning into a giant snake, which I guess is too unrealistic for this version, the replacement is simply a very long CGI sequence where they're being chased around on the magic carpet by a giant bird of prey version of Iago. And that really doesn't have a lot of weight to it. It doesn't feel like the finale of the movie. It feels totally limp on screen. There's also a lot of just little additions here and there, but again, none of them really add a new dimension to any of the characters. Jafar is given a little bit more backstory here, and I mean a little tiny bit. It's briefly mentioned that Jafar was also a thief like Aladdin, kind of setting up that the two are uh, kind of linked in some way, but then the movie almost totally forgets about it. That's simply a setup for later in the film so that he can pick pocket Aladdin to steal the lamp instead of the other way that he did it in the animated version. See what I mean? It's just simply, oh, we did a little thing differently, but overall it doesn't really affect much in the grand scheme of things. That's the new version of Aladdin for you. And there are things about this remake that do work. One of them is Will Smith. Obviously, Robin Williams is totally irreplaceable. In terms of his roles, I think the genie is perhaps the purest manifestation of his creativity. Animation as a form is perhaps the only one that could truly capture Williams' comic abilities, the way that he improvises, totally free associative, and goes into seamless impressions. It's the only medium that truly kept up with him. And so obviously you can't do that again. You can't do an impression of Robin Williams. And so Smith wisely doesn't do that. What he brings to the table is himself. He brings his charisma and showmanship. He does his take on the genie and that's what works about it. It's because it's one of the few elements in this remake that is going for something new and that's the key thing. It feels like Smith is trying to put his own stamp on it. If there is an issue with Smith though, it is definitely that motion capture CGI. I presume this is the same technology I used on Mark Ruffalo in Avengers Endgame, but here it looks so much worse for whatever reason. And I think it's because it's just slightly off. It's close enough to Smith that it's really uncanny valley, but it's just really unsettling. And I think the secret is the eyes. The eyes, they don't, they don't quite look right. There are certain shots that are really photorealistic and then others where he just looks really kind of rubbery. And why is he so jacked? I have no idea why they chose that. And I do wish that more of the film actually had Smith in person as the genie. It's about 50-50 in terms of screen time. But again, it's one of those things that always pulls you out of the movie whenever he's big and blue. Although, generally speaking, I like Smith's performance in this film because essentially he is a big blue hitch. He's essentially dealing out dating advice to Aladdin and reminding him what really wins over Jasmine is on the inside, not what the genie can grow him. And Smith is obviously leaning heavily into his persona. If the film itself is cashing in on 90s nostalgia, then so is Smith here. Smith is deliberately trying to remind you of his Fresh Prince days. He's deliberately reminding you of, hey, do you remember when I used to be really, really 
fun, you know, before I decided to do really depressing movies as Oscar bait and try to dial back my charisma. This is classic flavor Will Smith. And you know what? That's fun to see. He brings the right of out of energy to it. And whenever he's on screen, the movie does seem to perk up. The film even tries to amplify how much of a throwback it is because the song over the credits is a Will Smith rap number in combination with DJ Khaled. Yes, I know. The first sound you hear over the closing credits is DJ Khaled, as if that wasn't enough of a detracting point already. And the three leads are quite well cast. Mena Masood does a really good job of capturing the spirit of his animated counterpart as Aladdin with that slickness and charm, but also that vulnerability and insecurity that makes up that character. Masood plays him as a lovable rogue, and it genuinely works. But the problem with the part is, of course, when you think about Aladdin, you don't actually think about Aladdin, you think about the genie, and unfortunately, he has to play a lot of scenes as the straight man to Will Smith, and essentially just hold his own with him while Smith steals the limelight around him. But when Masood gets scenes by himself, he really is a winning presence. Similarly, Naomi Scott, probably best known for the recent Power Rangers, is a great fit as Princess Jasmine. I think she really inhabits that role, and it helps that the screen script actually strengthens that part. I think that that's one of the better additions to this movie is they've tried to make Jasmine a more assertive, independent character, updating her for the times a bit more successfully than they say did Belle in Beauty and the Beast. At least she's not inventing a washing machine this time. But it definitely feels like they crowbarred that in in a really clumsy way. Especially the fact that Jafar is always trying to shut her down, always trying to put her in her place by telling her to literally be silent. And that's so on the nose. I know that the film is trying to be relevant and contemporary, but you need a little bit more finesse about it. Unfortunately, though, they got one very wrong. Marwan Kanzari is egregiously miscast as Jafar, and he's quite an experienced actor, but he just does not suit this role at all. In the original version of Aladdin, you'll know that Jafar was quite an imposing figure, in large part because of that voice acting, especially that deep authoritative voice. You genuinely got a sense that he was a really controlling figure, and yet, in this remake, you really don't get that at all, in large part because Kinzari has actually quite a softly spoken voice, and so he really doesn't carry the presence that you would expect Jafar to have. And that really isn't helped by the small changes the film keeps making about his character. You know, one of the big things about Jafar is that he has the power to hypnotize people with his staff. We clearly see that in the animated film. There's a clear scene where they establish that properly. Instead, in the remake, whenever they do establish it, they usually have a character interrupt midway through, which keeps knocking the power away from Jafar. In order to establish him as a credible villain, you need to have him impose some sort of action on the narrative. You need to clearly have him in control of some part of the situation. But the remake always tramples over that. It seems to not realize that it's actually making its villain considerably weaker by degree every time it keeps doing this. Of course, Aladdin is also a musical, but it also falls flat on that count, in large part because Guy Ritchie shows no flair for directing musicals, and especially big numbers. This is a really expensive movie, and there's a lot of it on screen in a lot of ways, in terms of production and set design, and it looks really bright and colourful, but then it also feels curiously cheap in the way that it doesn't really give any memorable staging for the musical numbers. I think this has been commented on a lot with regards to the Prince Ali clip. It's definitely a good example of this. It's adapted the song to fit Will Smith rapping it, but it's essentially just Will Smith walking and talking for the most part whilst the choreography goes on around him. There's no attempt to have any big kind of energy to it, and again, 
not going to match the animated version, but you could have tried much harder than this. It feels more like you're watching a very expensive parade float more than anything else. And so many of the songs in this film are staged in this really flat way where they just have the actors just walk and talk and just have the camera follow them in continuous shots. Especially egregious is the brand new song they've written for Jasmine, and it just feels jarringly out of place. There's no attempt to properly integrate it. It first appears early on in the film, and it's only there for about a minute or so, and again, it's just Jasmine walking through her room out onto the balcony and that's it that's all the staging there is to it and then the movie feels the need to reprise that song much later on and it does it in the worst possible spot in the middle of the third act in a big dramatic moment time literally stops the movie literally halts its momentum for this musical number about jasmine singing about how empowered she is and it's just so unnecessary. It just stops the movie totally cold. And again, there's no imagination to how this is particularly portrayed. It's just Naomi Scott wandering through the set. And instead, it's just making characters disappear as she walks past them as a substitution for actually making it any way visually interesting. Yes, you've done it as a continuous take, but there needs to be something going on. It really says something when the most memorably staged moment in a musical is the bit right before the credits where they all have an elaborate dance number that I presume is meant to be Bollywood inspired in that moment but actually more looks like one of those animated films where they can't figure out how to end the movie so they just have a big dance number at the end of it. Aladdin isn't a bad movie, it makes bad choices but overall it's boringly competent, it's watchable and that only really goes to show how crushingly uninspired it is. It doesn't even have the boldness to be memorably terrible. Terrible. It simply is what it is, which is to say a brazen cash grab. Honestly, why else would this exist? In a situation where you had to show the animated film or the remake to your kids, why would you introduce them to the remake first? That would never happen. And so the same thing applies to going to see this movie in the first place. Why would you go and see a mildly different version of a film that you probably already own on home video that has a much clearer sense of purpose? purpose about it. It literally does everything that this film does much better in almost every department. And the really depressing thing about this film is that Disney is the genie at this point. They have magic at their fingertips, they can grant any wish that they want, and yet they know that they can keep pumping out these mildly different versions of their existing hits over and over again, knowing that a huge audience will go and see them. These films make huge amounts of money for what is ostensibly very low effort for the most part. This is $185 million blown on creating something they've already done once already. It just feels incredibly wasteful, and worse, it reiterates that they don't have to take any chance chances whatsoever. They don't have to take any kind of risk on an original or new IP. They can just simply do the same thing over and over again and people will just go and see it anyway. That I find really upsetting because you know what? For all of Tomorrowland's fault, at least it was trying to be something different. This newest version of Aladdin is yet another example of the redundancy of many of Disney's remakes. It's given little room to change things because of how beloved and how well written its animated predecessor was, and what is new here is largely cosmetic or simply bloats and pads out the story. This live action incarnation struggles mightily to capture the wit of its hand drawn counterpart, even replicating visuals and dialogue near constantly, which gives it little chance to be its own interpretation because it's always inviting a losing comparison with an audience who have almost certainly seen this all before. 
Thor. Although Robin Williams is irreplaceable, Will Smith brings the right kind of showmanship to his take on the genie to be a high point, and Scott and Masood are well cast as the leads, but Kanzari is a glaringly weak replacement for Jafar, and Guy Ritchie's direction is strictly anonymous. In the end, it all feels very pointless, because if you haven't seen Disney's take on this story before, why settle for an expensive but inferior facsimile? If you like this review, then I can make your wishes come true over at my Patreon, where you can see my reviews early, among other perks, including access to my Discord server. But until next time, I'm Matthew Buck, fading out. Thank you.